Imagine waking up one day to find a letter addressed to you from another planet. That's exactly what happened to Will Smith, a seemingly ordinary guy with an extraordinary story to tell. The letter was shiny, covered in symbols that shimmered like stars. Dear Earthling, it began. Or should we say, dear fellow Martian? Yes, you heard that right. Will, our beloved Earth resident, might not be from Earth at all. The letter claimed that Will was actually a Martian, sent to Earth as a baby to study human behavior. Talk about a cosmic identity crisis. Will laughed it off at first. Very funny, he thought. Which of my friends came up with this? But as he made his coffee, things started floating around him. Cups, spoons, the cat. Was it just a coincidence? Or Martian gravity at play? His neighbor, peeking through the window, dropped her jaw, seeing floating kitchenware. Will's finally lost it, she muttered. With a bewildered swipe, Will tried to unfloat everything, which only made matters more chaotic. Seeking answers, Will headed to his favorite cafe, where the barista somehow knew his order before he spoke. It's a Martian thing, she winked. Strolling through the park, Will pondered his predicament. Birds flew backwards, dogs talked, and squirrels gave financial advice. Was he losing his mind? An old man on a bench, who claimed to be 200 years old, offered Will a cookie. It's a Martian delicacy, he explained. The cookie tasted like chicken soup and apple pie. Definitely Martian, Will concluded, feeling more at home with every bite. His phone rang with a ringtone he'd never set, Martian opera. It was his mom. Honey, did you get the letter? she asked nervously. Turns out, his parents needed to confess something. They too were Martians, and it was time for their family to return home. Will faced a choice, embrace his Martian heritage or stay on Earth, the only home he'd ever known. His friends didn't believe him at first, but after seeing a cat solve algebra, they came around. Guess it's time to help Will pack for Mars, they joked. Packing for Mars isn't easy when your luggage keeps floating away. Gravity suitcases should have thought of that, Will mused. At his goodbye party, Will's friends gave him gifts like anti-gravity socks and a book titled Mars for Earthlings. Preparations for the trip involved learning to breathe thin air and practicing Martian dialects. It sounds like French mixed with whale songs, Will laughed. On his last night on Earth, Will looked up at the stars. I'm actually going to live there, he marveled, still in disbelief. The departure was bittersweet. Will hugged his Earth friends, promising to send space postcards. The spaceship was less sci-fi sleek and more retro disco. Martians love their glitter, Will noted. Dinner in space was an adventure. Floating tacos proved messy but delicious. Zero gravity made for fun sleep. Will dreamed he was a butterfly, or was he a Martian dreaming he was Will? As Mars approached, Will felt a pang of nostalgia. Earth was behind him now, but ahead lay new adventures. Landing on Mars was smoother than any airplane. The red dust kicked up like confetti welcoming him home. Martians greeted him with cheers. One of us, they chanted, making Will laugh and cry at the same time. Exploring Mars was like walking through a dream. Crystals that glowed, mountains that whispered, and skies that danced with colors unseen on Earth. Will's new home was cozy. A dome with a view of Olympus Mons, a garden of alien flowers, and a robot butler named Bob. Sitting on his Martian porch, Will reflected on his journey. What if we are all a bit alien? He pondered. Maybe that's what makes life so wonderfully strange. And so, Will embraced his Martian side, finding humor in the unknown and joy in the cosmic journey. Remember, sometimes the strangest stories are the most true. Could there be a little bit of Martian in you too?